नमस्कार स्टूडेंट्स माई नेम इज़ ज्योत्सना आई एम फ्रॉम चंडीगढ़ एजुकेशन डिपार्टमेंट टूडे वी विल टॉक अबाउट हिस्ट्री हिस्ट्री इज अ मिस्ट्री इन ऑर्डर टू डी कोड दिस मिस्ट्री द हिस्टोरियंस हैविली रिलाई ऑन मैनी सोर्सेस वन ऑफ सच सोर्स इज आर्ट एंड आर्किटेक्चर art and architecture gives a clear vision of a particular point of time the lifestyle of the rulers of the common people everything can be derived from the study of art and architecture that is what we are going to discuss in today's session we are going to take up chapter number 5 from class 7 history book our past part 2 the name of the chapter is rulers and buildings let's get going Indian history is full of rise and fall of many kingdoms and empires monuments built by the kings throw light on the history of india these monuments exhibit the glory of india and are integral part of our cultural heritage almost all states of india boast of some or the other important historical monument thousands of tourists visit india to have a glimpse of its important historical places taj mahal is one of the most famous and beautiful building of the world taj mahal was built by emperor shah jahan as a tomb for his wife mumtaz mahal its matchless beauty draws visitors from all parts of the world the taj mahal got the highest ranking among the seven wonders of the world after the biggest online poll on the new sevenwonders.com red fort is one of those monuments which enhance the grace of delhi red fort was also built by shah jahan the mughal emperor the architecture of this building has a splendid impact of red stone and marble works it has delicate carvings on every possible surface Qutub Minar is also a significant historical monument. The construction of Qutub Minar was started by Qutubuddin Aybak in 12th century, but it was completed by his successor Iltutmish. The minar rises over 230 feet. The walls of the minar are intricately carved and inscribed with the verses from the Holy Quran. It is often viewed as a symbol of military might of the Turks Afghan dynasty. Delhi also boasts of historical monuments like Purana Kila, Humayun's tomb, Jantar Mantar and many more. Then we move to Hyderabad. Hyderabad is famous for its charming minarets, Charmina. The city is often identified with the majestic Charmina. which stands at the center of the old city it was built by muhammad qil shah char minar with its enormous size and majestic splendor attracts a number of visitors hyderabad has many other famous monuments like golconda fort purani haveli tombs of qutub shahi kings etc there are a number of such monuments that are not only historically famous but also have religious significance like Jagannath Puri Puri is well known for a 12th century temple called Jagannath erected in honor of Hindu god Vishnu it begun by king Chado Gangeva and completed by the king Anang Bhim Deva 3 it is very vast temple golden temple of amritsar is also known as darbar sahib It is a great pilgrimage center of the Sikhs. The holy temple was completed under the direct control and supervision of Sri Guru Arjan Dev. Its foundation stone was laid by a renowned Muslim divine Mein Mir. 
the guru intended to keep the temple open to people of all caste creeds and faith so it was given four rows representing each direction it has a layer pool around it during maharaja ranjit singh's reign the lower half of the temple was decorated with marble while the entire upper half was in laid with the copper converted over by gold plate hence it is known as golden temple some other religious monuments as badrinath temple dirbara temple dakshineshwar temple kalashnath temple seven pagoda lotus temple rameshwaram temple all of them bring glory to india on the world map in british era too some important monuments were constructed these monuments have their own important place in indian history india gate was constructed in the memory of those indian soldiers who were killed in world war 1 gateway of india was built to commemorate the visit of first ever british monarch king george v and queen mary in 1911 There are a number of other monuments built by the British. These are Rashtrapati Bhavan, Parliament House, Victoria Memorial. All these monuments are visited by millions of tourists around the globe throughout the year. Its rulers and buildings. So, let's get going. Between the 8th and 18th century, two kinds of structure built by kings and officers: forts, palaces, garden residences and tombs safe protected and grandiose places of rest in the world second were structures meant for public activity including temples mosques tanks wells carwans and bazaars kings were expected to care for subjects and hence by building structures for their use and comfort they wanted to get praise from the people construction was mostly carried out by other including the merchants temples were built mosques and wells nevertheless domestic architecture large mansions which today are known as havelis of merchants survived only from the 18th century we must talk about the engineering skills and construction used in that era Monuments give insight into the technologies used for construction. Roof, for example, is manufactured by placing wooden beam or a slab of stone across four walls. However, to make a large room with elaborate superstructure requires more sophisticated skills. Between the 7th and 10th centuries, architects added more rooms, doors and windows to the buildings. Roofs doors and windows were made by placing a horizontal beam across two vertical columns a style of architecture called trebit or cobbled which was used in constructing temples mosques tombs and in buildings attached to large stepped wells which were known as baulis between 8th and 13th centuries Temple construction in the early 11th century. King Dangadeva of Chandel dynasty constructed the Kandariya Mahadev Temple, dedicated to Shiva in 999. It had an ornamented gateway leading to an entrance and main hall, which was known as Mahamandapa, where dances were performed. Image of the chief deity was kept in the main shrine. which was known as garbhagriha the place for the ritual worship where only the king the immediate family and the priest gathered the khajuraho complex contained royal temples where commoners were not allowed entry the temples were decorated with elaborately carved sculptures the raja rajeshwara temple at tanjore has the tallest shikhara amongst temples of its time so building it was not easy as There were no cranes in those days and it was too heavy to lift manually the 90 ton stone from the top of the shikara hence the architects built an inclined path not too steep that started over 4 kilometers away to the top of the temple placed the boulder on the roller and rolled it all the way to the top 
the path was dismantled after the temple was constructed but the residents of the area remembered the experience of the construction of the temple for a long time even now a village near the temple is called charupallam the village of the inclined two noticeable technological and stylistic developments from 12th century were first was architectural form called arcuate the weight of the superstructure above the doors and windows were sometimes carried by the arcs high quality limestone cement mixed with stone chips hardened into concrete increasingly used in construction helped make the construction of large structures easier and faster let's talk about building temples mosques and tanks temples and mosques were beautifully constructed reason they were places of worship they were also meant to demonstrate the power wealth and devotion of the patron example of raja rajeshwara temple built by king raja raj deva for the worship of his god raja rajeshwaram king took god's name as it was auspicious and he wanted to appear like a god why the rituals of worship at the temple one god raja rajadeva honored another raja rajeshwaram largest temples were all constructed by king lesser deities in the temple were gods and goddesses of the allies and subordinates of the ruler it was a miniature model of the world ruled by the king and his allies muslim sultans and padshahs did not claim to be incarnation of god persian court chronicle described the sultan as the shadow of god an inscription in the kawal islam mosque god choose alauddin as a king he had the qualities of moses and solomon the great lawgiver of the past the greatest lawgiver and architect god created the world out of chaos and introduced order and symmetry with the advent of new dynasty to par kings wanted to emphasize their moral rights to be rulers building places of worship helped rulers with the chance to proclaim a close relationship with god especially important in an age of rapid political change rulers offered patronage to learned and pious tried to transform their capitals and cities into great cultural centers brought fame to their rule and their realm made precious water available by constructing tanks and reservoirs sultan iltutmish constructed a large reservoir just outside delhi kuwa called hauze sultani or king's reservoir rulers often constructed tanks and reservoirs big and small for use by the ordinary people sometimes these tanks and reservoirs were part of a temple mosque or a gurdwara why were temples targeted now since temples were built to demonstrate king's devotion to god and their power and wealth when they attacked one another's kingdoms they often targeted their buildings early 19th century pandyan king Shrimara Sri Vallabha invaded Sri Lanka and defeated King Sena I in 831 to 851. According to a Buddhist monk and a chronicle, Dhammakitti, he removed all the valuables, the statue of Buddha made entirely of gold in the Jewel Palace and the golden images in the various monasteries, all these he seized. In order to avenge this blow to the pride of Sinhalsa ruler the next Sinhalsa ruler Sena II ordered his general to invade Madurai the capital of Pandyas the expedition made a special effort to find and restore the gold statue of Buddha early 11th century Chola king Rajendra I built a Shiva temple in his capital filled it with the prized statues seized for defeated rulers the list included a sun pedestal from Chalukyas a Ganesh statue and several statues of Durga a Nandi statue 
from the eastern Chalukyas and images of Bhairava, a form of Shiva, and Bhairavi from Kalinga of Odisha, and a Kali statue from the Palas of Bengal. Sultan Muhammad of Ghazni, contemporary of Rajendra I, attacked the temples of defeated kings, looted their wealth and idols, not a very important ruler at that time. But by destroying temples, especially the one at Somnath, he won the credit as great hero of Islam, garden, tombs, and forts. The Mughal architecture was complex. Babur, Humayun, Akbar, Jahangir, and especially Shah Jahan, personally interested in literature, art, and architecture. Babur described his interest in planning and laying out formal gardens placed within rectangular walled enclosures and divided into four quarters by artificial channels, garden called Chahar Bagh, four gardens. Because of their symmetrical division into quarters, Akbar, Jahangir and Shah Jahan built some beautiful char bags in Kashmir, Agra and Delhi. Architectural innovations during Akbar's reign Architects turned to the tomb of Central Asian ancestors, Timur, for the inspiration. Central Tower, Doom, and the Tall Gateway, Pishtak, what they called. Important aspects of the Mughal architecture were visible in Humayun's tomb. Tomb placed in the center of a huge formal charbag, built in the tradition known as Eight Paradises or Hasht Bihisht. A central hall surrounded by eight rooms, constructed with red sandstone, edged with white marble. During Shah Jahan's reign, different elements of Mughal architecture was fused in grand harmonious synthesis. His reign witnessed huge amount of construction in Agra and Delhi. Ceremonial halls of public and private audience, which was known as Diwane Khas or Aam, was carefully planned, located within a large courtyard, these courts were described as Chichil Sutun or 40 pillared halls. Shah Jahan's audience hall resembled a mosque. Pedestal where his throne was placed was described as Qibla, the direction faced by Muslims at prayer. Since everybody faced that direction when the court was in session, architectural features suggest the idea of king as representative of God on earth. Connection between royal justice and the imperial court emphasized by Shah Jahan in his newly constructed court in Red Fort at Delhi behind Emperor's throne was series of Pitara Dura inlays that depict the legendary Greek god Orpheus. Saying the belief is that Orpheus' music could calm ferocious beasts until they coexisted together peacefully. Shah Jahan's audience hall aimed to communicate that the king's justice would treat the high and the low as equals, creating a world where all could live together in harmony. Shah Jahan's capital was Agra. Nobility had homes amidst formal gardens built in the char bagh format, also known as riverfront gardens. Shah Jahan adapted the riverfront garden in layout of Taj Mahal. Shah Jahan developed his architectural form as means to control the access that nobles had to the river. In the new city of Shah Jahanabad, constructed in Delhi, the imperial palace command the riverfront and only specially favored nobles like his eldest son Dara Shok were given access to the river. All others had to construct their homes in the city away from River Yamuna. Region and Empire Between 8th and 18th century, construction activities increased. Rise in sharing of ideas across regions, traditions of one region adapted by another. For example, in Vijayanagara, the elephant stables of the rulers were strongly influenced by the style of architecture found in adjoining Sultanate of Bijapur and Golconda. In Vrindavan near Mathura, temples were constructed in architectural styles that were very similar to the Mughal palaces in Fatehpur Sikri. 
in bengal local rulers had developed a roof that was designed to resemble a thatched hut mughal like the bangla dome and adapted this to their architecture many buildings in akbar's capital at fatehpur sikri followed architecture styles of gujarat and malwa authority of mughal rulers waned in the 18th century but the architectural styles developed under their patronage were constantly used and adapted by other rulers whenever they tried to establish their own kingdoms hope today's session was fruitful for you let's try to analyze what you have learned out of it on your screens you can see a statement which is incomplete let's fill these blanks the inscription under the first balcony of kutub minar are in arabic il tutmish one universal respect for constructing a large reservoir just outside delhi kuwa important aspects of mughal architecture like the central dome and the tall gateway were first visible in ibrahim lodi under the muhammad tughlaq architecture became more complex the remaining floors of kutub minar were constructed by kutubuddin aibak around 1229 the elephant stables in vijayanagara were influenced by the architectural styles of fatehpur sikri sultan of bijapur sultan of golconda both b and c the correct answer is both b and c the taj mahal is the grandest architectural accomplished by the reign of jahangir babar shah jahan or akbar yes the correct option is option c shah jahan the surface of the minar is straight curved angular both b and c correct answer is option b curved the first floor of kutub minar was constructed by dash around 1199 was it kutubuddin aibak humayu ibrahim lodi or muhammad tughlaq option a is correct option it is kutubuddin aibak india india is known in the world for being rich in its culture and heritage these buildings add up to our credentials we are proud of our heritage we'll be back with many more videos till then stay safe stay healthy and keep studying namaskar